Welcome to another episode of the ACU Bootcamp series on the JPS Interop channel. In this episode, we'll briefly discuss ACU technology, which will give you the basic understanding of the ACU gateway, its communication interfaces, and how it's implemented into a system. This episode will provide you with material that you'll use throughout the ACU Bootcamp. For this exercise, we're going to use the ACU 2000 interoperability gateway as an example. However, as we mentioned in our previous episode, the parameters and interfaces that we discuss in this episode will be similar amongst all JPS interoperability gateways. So let's take a quick tour of the ACU 2000. The ACU 2000 is modular, meaning module elements can be removed and replaced to meet mission requirements. Gateways such as ACU 5000 and the ACU M are non modular gateways. Starting with the leftmost module, PSM 1A is the power supply module. It's the only module in the ACU chassis that is not hot swappable. Remove the power source from the ACU prior to withdrawing the PSM 1A module. Next is the HSP 2. 2A module. HSP2A stands for Handset Speaker Prompt. The unit supports a PTT handset which incidentally will be used extensively during all interface alignments and troubleshooting activities. There's also an internal speaker that can be enabled or disabled at any time. And finally, an integral voice prompt generator and keypad are used during computerless operations. Next is the CPM module which stands for Control Processor Module. The CPM module manages other modules in the chassis and is sort of the brains of the gateway. It's also the primary primary module used for remote control and monitoring of the interoperable gateway. We often use controller applications such as the ACU controller and the Waze controller to remotely manage ACU gateways. The CPM contains non-volatile memory, which stores all the settings of the interface modules. If an interface module should fail, you can swap it with another similar module, and the settings for that new module will be immediately derived from the CPM module. This will alleviate the need to realign the replacement module, and this can even be accomplished while interoperability is taking place place with the unit turned on. There are 12 chassis slots at the right that will support various communication interface modules. Depending on the disparate communication environment you choose to interoperate with, you'll need a specific interface module plugged into those chassis slots. One of those interface modules is the PSTN2 module, which stands for Public Switch Telephone Network. It interfaces with analog telephone switch circuits. For all intents and purposes, PSTN module is a telephone, and when cross-connected with radio talk groups, it will allow telephone users to speak directly with radio operators through the ACU gateway. Remember, this is a modular gateway and interface modules can reside in any of the 12 slots to the right of the ACU 2000 chassis. The SCM interface module, which stands for SIP channel module, allows interfacing with VoIP digital telephony environments. The SCM module allows radio channels and talk groups to be assigned a telephone extension. The SCM module uses the standards-based protocol, session initiation protocol, also known as SIP. Specifically, the SCM1 module interfaces VoIP telephone users directly with the radio network. It cannot be cross-connected with other disparate communication assets, whereas the SCM2 can be cross-connected to any other interface module in the ACU gateway. The distinction between the SCM1 and the SCM2 is that the SCM1 cannot be cross-connected. Only the SCM2 can interoperate with other disparate communication environments. And finally, the DSP2 module is your primary radio interface module. DSP stands for Digital Signal Processor. It comes in two versions, but in both their basic forms, they allow the ACU gateway to associate to the radio infrastructure. DSP module will be our focus during the upcoming ACU bootcamp episodes. Digital signal processing is used extensively in nearly all JPS products and solutions. We use digital signal processors to convert the analog audio into a digital format where it's easier to analyze and alter the audio data in ones and zeros. We can then use software to apply complex filters, detect human speech, remove noise, add and subtract gain, and buffer or delay audio, just to name a few of the functions of the DSP. And controllers can be used to make those adjustments. Once we're done analyzing and altering the digital data, we can then convert it back into an analog signal, which can then be shared with other disparate communication systems. Besides the ACU gateway, an important element in the interoperable environment is the donor radio. The donor radio is simply a land mobile radio subscriber unit that can either be a portable or a mobile radio, which 
allows the gateway to interact with the radio infrastructure. This can be accomplished through an associated repeater or in a simplex fashion, radio to radio, or even through a satellite radio network. We just need to access the analog voice information and some basic radio control signals of the donor radio. The donor radio is associated to the ACU gateway using model specific radio interface cables. The cable will support full duplex, higher low impedance, balancer single ended receive and transmit audio. The radio interface cable also supports radio control signals and in some cases RS-232. Two or more disparate radio environments can be consolidated into a single interoperability domain by cross connecting DSP modules. Depending on the variant of the ACU gateway, this can be done over an analog backplane or digitally. In any case, receive audio will be gathered by one donor radio and distributed to all other donor radios in the interoperable group for retransmission. This is all accomplished through individual DSP modules. Since we're dealing with mobile radios and push to talk, we need to keep a semblance of order. As radio operators in the field, we press our push to talk button while others listen. We listen while another user presses their push to talk button and speaks. The ACU must do the same thing. We use control signals to command DSP modules to perform certain timely functions, as well as to signal other donor radios to begin transmitting or receiving communications. For example, when a user presses their push to talk button on the radio in the field, this sets off a series of events. The receiver of the associated donor radio fully quiets, and in some cases generates an electrical impulse, which we call a carrier operated relay signal, commonly called COR. The COR signal is used to alert the DSP module to perform certain functions. And because of the cross connection, a complementary PTT control signal from the DSP module activates the transmitter of the disparate donor radio. When the user in a field releases their push to talk button, the core signal goes away. This on and off activity is used to signal the ACU's DSP modules to begin processing the user's voice communications and then pass it along to other DSP modules in the associated cross connection. For all intents and purposes, when a user presses the push to talk on their radio, they activate the transmitter on all other disparate radios associated in the interoperable cross connection. So through the virtues of the digital signal processor, when one speaks into their own radio, they are virtually speaking into their allied agency's radio system at the same time without the need to handle or possess the disparate agency's radio. The process is simple, but so what's the fuss about aligning modules or resources in the ACU gateway? Remember in a previous episode, 200, where we described the neutral or agnostic nature of the interface modules. We said we didn't care about the receive and transmit frequencies, the method of modulation, the protocol, or the presence of encryption, or even the manufacture of the radio system. Well, in fact, we do care about the disparate nature of different radios and the radio systems. There are many reasons to align. The input preamp of a donor radio may require more drive than another donor radio. This might cause over or under modulation when donor radios are cross-connected. Some radio systems have complex processes that slow the radio's reaction time through the gateway. The resulting shared communications might exhibit the loss of the first few syllables of the transmission due to the process delay. Some single sideband, HF, and amplitude modulated radio systems sometimes are different difficult to squelch and will exhibit constant receiver noise. In a cross connection, this will cause other donor radios to be inadvertently keyed. The interaction between disparate radio environments may also cause systems to be conflicted, causing those systems to be made completely inoperable. And process delay is not just limited to the radio system. Implementing digital signal processors in the ACU can alleviate many of those issues. However, just the presence of a DSP inherently adds process delay, as we described earlier. And remember, this process is not instantaneous and sometimes results in a momentary loss of voice communications. So this concludes our ACU technology primer. In the next episode, we'll discuss the fundamentals of the DSP2 module alignment with respect to different radio systems that you might encounter in your area of operation, in your communities, or during mutual aid. This will ensure that those radio systems will reliably interoperate. Every couple of weeks, we should have a new episode of useful technical information that'll help you better understand ACU technology and provide your organization or agency dependable interoperable communications. And if you have any suggestions on future episodes you would like us to include, or if you're interested in more information on our products and solutions, give us a call or visit us at jpsinterop.com.